By taking the actions that I've outlined and many other significant measures during Operation Cast Lead, the IDF did more to safeguard the rights of civilians in a combat zone than any other army in the history of warfare. I've spoken of the considerable British and American efforts to operate within the laws of war and to reduce unnecessary civilian casualties. The IDF faced all the challenges that I've spoken about and more. Not only was Hamas's military capability deliberately positioned behind the human shield of the civilian population, not only did Hamas employ the range of insurgent tactics I talked through earlier, they also ordered, forced when necessary, men, women and children from their own population to stay put in places they knew were about to be attacked by the IDF. Fighting an enemy that is deliberately trying to sacrifice their own people, deliberately trying to lure you into killing their own innocent civilians, and Hamas, like Hezbollah, are also highly expert at driving the media agenda. They will always have people ready to give interviews condemning Israeli forces for war crimes. They're adept at staging and distorting incidents. Their people often have no option than to go along with the charades in front of the world's media that Hamas so frequently demand, on pain of death. What is the other challenge faced by the IDF that we British do not have to face to the same extent? It is the automatic Pavlovian presumption by many in the international media and international human rights groups that the IDF are in the wrong, that they're abusing human rights. So what did the IDF do in Gaza to meet their obligation to operate within the laws of war? When possible, the IDF gave at least four hours notice to civilians to leave targeted areas targeted for attack. Attack helicopter pilots tasked with destroying Hamas mobile weapons platforms had total, discre total discretion to abort a strike if there was too great a risk of civilian casualties in the area. Many missions that could have taken out Hamas military capability were cancelled because of this. During the conflict, the IDF allowed huge amounts of humanitarian aid into Gaza. This sort of task is regarded by most military tacticians as risky and dangerous at the best of times. To mount such operations, to deliver aid virtually into your enemy's hands, is to the military tactician normally quite unthinkable. But the IDF took on those risks. In the latter stages of cast lead, the IDF unilaterally announced a, three hour, a daily three-hour ceasefire. They dropped over 900,000 leaflets warning the population of impending attacks to allow them to leave designated areas. A complete air squadron was dedicated to this task alone. Leaflets also urged the people to phone in information to pinpoint Hamas fighters, vital intelligence that could save lives. The IDF phoned over 30,000 Palestinian households in Gaza, urging them in Arabic to leave homes where Hamas might have stashed weapons or be preparing to fight. Similar messages were passed in Arabic on Israeli radio broadcasts, warning the civilian population of forthcoming operations. Despite Israel's extraordinary measures, of course, innocent civilian lives, uh, of course, innocent civilians were killed and wounded. That was due to the frictions of war that I've spoken about, and even more was an inevitable consequence of Hamas's way of fighting. 